Let's lift our hearts tonight. Bless the Lord our God. Strength. The woman by whom we live, we move, we have our being. Let's honor him. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one holy as the Lord. And here on earth and in the heavens up above. There is no one, no one, only as the Lord. There is no one, only as the Lord. Let's say there is no one, there is no one, only as the Lord. Here on earth. There is no one, no one, no one, there is no one, no In the morning, new messes fall on me every day. And every day, until the setting of the sun. Oh, yes. What a wonder. And a beauty to be old. And in the eyes of every man, you are the holy. What a wonder and a beauty to be old and in the eyes of every man you are the holiest of all. Father, we bless you. You are glorious in your holiness. You're fearful in praises. Tonight we exalt you and bless your name. Receive our thanksgiving and pour upon us the spirit of wisdom and revelation tonight in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. We may have receipts tonight. Great. How has been our day, our week? I believe we've had a very great week walking in the resurrection power of God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Throughout last week, we looked at a toth that we called the living God. And if you can look deep into the body I was trying to communicate in that teaching, you would discover that I was trying to tell us that if you know God, it will not be an obscured personality to you. How many of you believe? To an extent, God can be predictable. Is God predictable? 
Is God predictable? How am I to marry? Bellumi, is God predictable? If you know someone very well, you should be able to say what they will do or what they can do and what they cannot do. So when God becomes very known to you, you should be able to say, for example, in Proverbs chapter 7 verse 11, Proverbs chapter 7 verse 11, the Bible says, is it Proverbs chapter 7? Just a minute. Sorry. In Psalms 18, verse 26. Psalms 18, verse 26. The Bible told us, With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the div devious, you will show yourself shrewd. Another translation said, With the forward, you will show yourself forward. Which means you can predict how God relates with a person by the type of person that person is. If you know God enough, you should be able to make some statements about him. For example, you can say in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10, say to the righteous that it will be well with him. If something is real and is living, it can be predicted, it can be known, it can be observed. So when you observe God, you discover that with the forward, he shows himself forward, and with the pure, he shows himself pure. You can discern his judgment. Psalm 9 verse 16. Psalm 9 verse 16. The Lord is known. By the judgment he executes. Somebody said the Lord is known. By the judgment he executes. Automatically that tells us God can be known. Not even only known as a person, but his ways and the type of judgments he executes reflect him. God can never be an unjust judge. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. So we are not the ones who serve an unknown God. We serve a known God. And do you know why he's known? It's because he's alive. And when he's alive, he can be observed. When he's observed, it he can be to an extent predicted. When he's to an extent predicted, you can know him. He's observable. And if you understand my burden for that message, you know that I'm practically trying to bring us to an experiential walk with God. When I talk about an experiential work with God, I'm talking about the point where you can say, this is God. And say, that is not God. Because you have observed him enough to know his character and his mannerism and his ways. Praise God. 1 Chronicles 28 from verse 11. Tonight we are looking at what I call, the Lord made me understand. By his spirit. The Bible said David gave Solomon the plans for the vestibule, that's the temple, his houses, his treasuries, 
his upper chambers, his inner chambers, the place of the mercy seat. And the plans for all that he had by the Spirit. The architect behind the temple is not human wisdom. David had all those things, the treasuries, the place, the place of the mercy seat. He had all those plans by the Spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, of the chambers all around, of the treasuries of the house of God, of the treasuries for the dedicated things. That's how much God pays attention to details. God knew there must be chambers for the dedicated things and there must be chambers for treasures and there must be chambers for priests and God had all those things in his mind and impressed it upon David by the Spirit. He said also for the division of the priests and the Levites, for the work of the service of the house of the Lord, for all the articles of the service of the house of the Lord. I don't know whether you can appreciate this. God had plans. God had plans for articles, even the instruments. He gave gold by weight. Say precision. Gave gold. He didn't just tell David, you are going to build the house and it's going to have gold. He told him the amount of gold that is going to go into specific things. I want those, I mean, how many of you want to know God to the point that he can bring you specificity on issues? It's not just talking about general knowledge here. Yeah. He gave gold by weight for the things of gold. All articles used in every kind of service. Also silver for articles of silver. By weight for all articles used in every kind of service. The weight for the lampstands of gold and their lamps of gold. By weight for each lampstand and his lamp. The lampstands of silver by weight for the lampstand and his lamp. According to the use of each lampstand. Because what you can use gold for is different from what you can use silver for. And by weight, he gave gold for the tables of the showbread for each table and silver for the tables of, the, of silver. Also pure gold for the forks, the basins, the pitchers of the pure gold, the golden bowls. He gave gold by weight for every bowl and for every silver bowl. Every, every silver by weight for every bowl. And refined gold by weight for the altar of incense, for the construction of the chariot, that is the gold of cherubim that spread their wings and overshadowed the ark of the covenant of the Lord. All this, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me all the works of these plans. So David said, let me tell you, I came to know these things by length and breadth and by weight and their types and, and, and all the things that, that should be there. All this the Lord made me understand. He's saying, you can't fathom this that I described by study. God made me to understand it because by his hand. In another place, he had told us in verse 12, what his hand, what that his hand is. He said, all the plans that he had by the spirit. So what he called the hand in verse 19 he called it the, what? The spirit. That's why we are looking at the Lord made me understand by his spirit. There are many vehicles to understanding. For example, in Daniel chapter 1, chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, the Bible told us that Daniel understood by books. What color is this? Daniel understand by books the number of years specified by the word of the Lord through prophet Jeremiah that it will accomplish 70 years of desolations in Jerusalem. How did Daniel understand? Daniel understood because he got into books. If you want to check that, you see that in Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 9 to 12. See it again in Jeremiah 27, 6 to 8. Jeremiah 29, verse 10. And in 2 Chronicles 36, verse 21, when God told Israel that the land is going to have a Sabbath for 10, for 70 years, which is 10 cycles of Sabbath years for judgment. And so when Daniel was reading, Daniel came to what? To understand by reading. 
And please don't demean things you get by reading. Some people will say, well, except I see God talk to me, I can never accept that thing because it must be coming directly from the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God does not need to tell you thou shalt not fornicate. It is written. But 90% of the ways Jesus handled all the temptations is about by what is already documented. It is written. All the temptations of Jesus were answered in that way that it is written. It is written. What will you do when you don't even know what is written? A lot of people are looking for what is spoken and they are ignoring what is written. Are you following me, church? But I need to tell you the truth. That there are things about this kingdom that are not that logical. In John chapter 7, verse 14 to 18, they were speaking about Jesus. Said now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? I have shown you one wing of our access. It is understanding by that which is written. But they looked at Jesus and there were expressions in Jesus' life that couldn't be traced to any study of man. And Jesus answered them, My doctrine is not mine but of him who sent me. And he said, if anyone wills to do his will, he will know concerning the doctrine, whether it's from God or whether I speak of my own authority. Praise God. They had that same experience with the apostles in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. The Bible said they looked at them and they knew that they were, they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men and they marveled, but they knew that they've been with Jesus. There was something coming out of them but that could not be traced to their background or to their study. Are you following me? I'm trusting God that there will be a, a great foundation for your journey in that which is written, and there will be a great manifestation in your journey by that which is imparted by God. Because there are things in our life that the Lord makes us to understand by his hand. He brings details. And why? Because he's alive. He's not a dead God. In Psalm, 8, Psalm 94, verse 8 to 13, the Bible says, Understand you senseless among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He who planted here shall he not hear. If anybody's intelligent enough to create hearing, it is because the person understands the value of hearing. If he has never experienced hearing, he cannot create hearing in man. So every time you behold those capacities in yourself, they are the reflection of his intelligence. So he said it in this way in Genesis. Let's make man in our own likeness. In other words, there is a dimension of likeness he already carried by which he made man. So he that made ears, shall he not hear? He will form the eye, shall he not see? Say, my God hears. I say, my God sees. He who instruct nations, shall he not correct? He who teaches man knowledge. Continue. The Lord knows the thoughts of man. They are there. Put Yeah. Blessed is the man whom you instruct. Somebody say, God can instruct. Blessed is the man whom you instruct and teach. God is not so somebody we learn about. God is somebody that teaches us. Are you following me? Many times when we come to church, we think we come to learn about God. No. We, we, we learn about God. That is one of the wings that which we fly. But on another side, he teaches us. Because we live in him. We move in him. We have our being. He's not a far removed personality. He's our teacher. Hallelujah. You instruct and bless the man whom you instruct, O oh Lord, and teach out of your law. Beautiful. I like that word. God will never teach you anything that is in contra contradiction to his law. That's why there is no experience you are going to have that is going to be in contradiction to that which is already written. 
God will teach you, but in accordance with what he has what? Said. Are you still here? That you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. May God give us rest. How many of you will just cast your mind back and discover how many things you were so agitated about that never really mattered and never came to pass? If we had received rest from his teaching, we would have just been hiding. Look at it. The Lord, give me that verse, that, that verse, the previous verse again. That you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. Which means when you see the wicked roaming on the face of the earth, some people are taught to have rest that that wicked, the only reason why he's still standing above the ground is because we are preparing the pit for him. You don't get it. So it's not, in, it's, not in, it's not raining. It's actually that what they will use to judge him is being prepared. If you know that what will be used to judge the wicked is being prepared, what will be your perception of the power of the wicked? You will understand it's transient and you will even have mercy and sympathy for him. But because you can't see it and you are not taught from God, you are terrified of his power because you are not taught from God. May we be taught of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I just want you to know that God is alive. He speaks. That's all the world has been looking for. First Kings 18, 20, 24, the God who answers by fire, let him be God. We don't want a God who is inanimate. We don't want a God unrelatable. We don't want a God that cannot be observed. We don't even want a God we cannot predict. How do we make our boast of him when we cannot predict his character? How do we tell the world that he's going to heal when we cannot predict his character? The Bible didn't say the Spirit spoke to them at the beautiful gate. I want this man raised. They spoke from the conviction of the character of God that they know. And they said to the man, gold and silver we don't have, but what we have we give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. They, they spoke to the people. They said, we know you did everything you did against Jesus by ignorance. But now, God wants you to repent so that the times of refreshing. They spoke on behalf of God with the conviction of God because they know who they are talking about. They are not second guessing. They are not trying to think and capture him in other words. Are you following me? And that's the way God wants the church to talk about him. He said, I'm not going to call you servants anymore. Jesus said, I call you friends. What is the distinction? For servants don't know what their master does, but friends know. So God wants you to talk in the personal terms about him. Not just as servants, but as his friends. This is the mission of the New Testament. Somebody say amen. The Lord will make you understand by his spirit. Acts of the Apostles 7. I will read from verse 44 to 50. I want to examine the life of this man who made this statement that the Lord made me to understand by the Spirit. The man who said it is David. In Acts 7 verse 44, the Bible says, Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen. There was a tabernacle in the wilderness that it was a tent they carried. And God, when he was telling them to make it, in Exodus 25 verse 40, as, and recorded in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5, God told Moses, you have to make it as it is revealed to you on the mountain. So the description of the tabernacle is that it is it is a physical representation of something seen in the spirit. Are you still following me? Which our fathers having received in turn also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles. Whom God drove out before the face of the fathers until the days of David. We are tracing something from the wilderness now we are in David who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. The, the Ark of Covenant changed home in the days of David. He moved from that tabernacle of Mo in the wilderness to under another tent in Jerusalem. It's called the tabernacle of David. It 
It's a very simple, not so complicated structure. David just wanted God close. But the Bible went further and said, but Solomon built him a house. So he moved from the tabernacle, he came to the, what, the tent of David, then he, what? he came to the temple built by Solomon. However, the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, the heart is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? What place, what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all this? Which prophet prophesied that? That Isaiah. That is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1 and 2. In other words, God's houses have had four even descriptions in those places. It was a tabernacle in the wilderness, which has the description of make it as it is, as you, as, as you see on the mountain. It came to the tent of David, the temple of Solomon. But even after Solomon had built the temple, God asked a question because Isaiah lived after Solomon to say, where is my house? The last one is what I call the puzzle. There was a wilderness ark, or, or tabernacle, there was a tent of David, there was a temple of Solomon, and there is the puzzle of his house. Because even after they built the temple, God was still asking, where is my house? Glory to God. But our, our, our focus in all these houses principally today will be the tent of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16 to 17, the Bible spoke to us about this tent. After David went to bring the ark of God, now as the ark of God of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and wailing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David has what? Erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. It was before that ark in 2 Samuel 7 that David stood and was building his, where he was in his house and the ark. He said, how can I dwell in a house of cedar? When God's ark is dwelling on the tent, 2 Samuel chapter 7 from verse 1. And the Bible says he told a prophet called Nathan. There are lessons I want to bring out from that. Verse 2, who is there? The king said to Nathan the prophet, See, I dwell in the house of Cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. Nathan said to the king, go and do all that is in your heart for the Lord is with you. Eventually, God came to Nathan and told him, go tell David, he's not going to build the ark. First lesson tonight. How many of you know David is a prophet? The Bible told us. In Acts chapter 2, verse 29 and 30. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David. He's both dead and buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, David is a prophet. But David spoke to another prophet. One of the problems we have in church is that we can get so much absorbed in our spiritual experiences that we disconnect from every other resource that God has placed in his house. David is a prophet. David could have just said, if I need to have any idea about this app, I just go down to God. What? Talk to me. Directly. I'll just sit down and I'll be checking whether, what should I do with this app? I just go to God. It's amazing that as prophetic as you can ever be, you will always know in part. That is just the truth. God had determined in his plan that none of us will be the omniscient person. We will know, David being a prophet, knowing God has sworn an oath for him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on the throne. So David is a prophet. And if you go back to verse 25 of this Acts chapter 2, you begin to understand the amplification of the prophetic ministry of David. Because there were things David said 
that we cannot understand that somebody. David was so prophetic enough that he knew what Jesus was going to say on the cross. When you read Psalms 22, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Exactly. I mean, there were so many things about David that David spoke that were not of the time. David was that prophetic. As prophetic as David was, David spoke to Nathan. Ask your neighbor, how deep are you that nobody can talk to you? Some of us. <laughs> yeah, how can the Spirit of God? The way the Spirit of God has been moving me. Every spirit of a prophet that cannot be subdued, that cannot be put under control, is not the Holy Spirit. Time must talk. One of my sons there pinged me before I came to church that I want to propose to one sister and I have been received that since 2018. This is 2022. I told him, wait again. I said, he said, I have told my pastor. I said, yes. So he said, I will call my pastor this night. I said, you won't call him. I said, when did you tell your pastor? 2018. He said, no, January. I said, hey, hey. if it's January. I said, you will wait for next to next. Because that power that is driving you, that, oh, yes, I know, I am convinced. There are too many things that we've, we've been convinced about until we check with like-minded people and we discover we were never really convinced. We were just moved. There were so many people who called the will of God before. We later discovered there were mistakes of men. The Lord will make you understand by the Spirit. Now, all I'm trying to tell you is that I'm not saying you got it wrong. I'm just saying that one of the attributes of the prophetic personality is the ability to recognize that God can minister to them through other people. David was so deep a prophet. Look at Acts, that Acts 2. Let's read from verse 25. And let's look at David. And David says concerning him, I foresaw. Someone said foresaw. That's predictive capacity. He was not speaking of something of that time. He was speaking of something to come. I foresaw the Lord always before me. For it's at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced. My tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh will rest in hope. Yes. For you will not leave my soul in hate. David was speaking of resurrection. Nor will you allow your only one to see corruption. Please, how many of you have seen two, two months time? I'm not talking about 800 years. David saw a thousand years ahead. You made me to know the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Why we are quoting that is Psalm 16, verse 8 to 11. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that is both dead and is buried, and his tomb is, is with us today. Continues. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he will raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in it, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus, God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted at the right hand of God, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. Uh, for David did not ascend into heaven. David did not. Uh, listen, one of the things I said last week when we were talking about the living God that made people incapacitated to relate with God is that no man has ascended into heaven and no man has descended from heaven. So we all have this incapacity to say we've never been there. But David did not ascend into heaven, but he says of himself, the Lord said to my Lord, question, how did he know the discussion in heaven? Jehovah said to Adonai, the Lord said to Adonai, so when he said the Lord, the Lord Christ. It's not even a New Testament language. It's been from the beginning. But you have to be in the spirit to see 
David did not ascend. You see, this is the only, the only personality that will make you to speak about where you have never ascended to is who has been there. But it's now given to you. The Holy Spirit is not the spirit of this world. Are you following me? So it describes things that are not even of what? Are you still here? David did not ascend into the heavens, but he said to himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Continue. Who is there? Till I make your enemies your foes too. Therefore let all Israel know assuredly that the Lord has made this Christ, this Jesus, both whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. It was, that's another psalm. That's Psalm 110, verse 1 to 7. In that psalm, he even looked at Jesus and said, thou art a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek, he was I'm just trying to describe for you the depth of the prophetic nature of David's ministry. There are things David said that nobody could comprehend in his time. Let me give you another example. Matthew 22, verse 41 to 46. Matthew 22, verse 41 to 46. Where the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them. This is not often. Many times they ask Jesus a question, but this time Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how then does David in the spirit call him Lord? In the flesh is the son of David. But David looking at the Christ coming out of his body called him Lord. That can only be in the spirit. Yoruba people say you can no matter how children grow, they can never be older than their parents. If you are 70 and your father is still alive, it's your father. If you are not careful, you will still be giving you cancer. How are you treating that child like that? Some of you are still fighting the battle. How can my mom, mommy is still calling me every five minutes? What? How many of you know what I'm talking about? It does not matter whether you are built two houses, your headache, they are your parents. So anything that can make David look at, down into his generation, Saw something coming out of his body called his son, but he translated and called it Lord. He was not speaking by the flesh. David spoke but in the spirit. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your foes too. If David calls him Lord, how is he his son? Because the prophetic man is very hard to understand. Is he David's son? Yes. Is it David's Lord? How? The only the answer to that how is what Jesus called. David called him Lord in the spirit. That is what made David to understand that that which is coming out of your body as a son is your Lord can only be grasped by the Holy Spirit. There is no other way you can comprehend that transaction Except the Holy Spirit makes you understand. Are you following me? And I'm praying the Lord, the Spirit will make you understand. No one was able to answer him for you in that word. Because you are, you are dealing with spiritual things. Not from that day did anyone question him anymore. He said all that to make us understand that it is an aberration to claim that you are prophetic and you are not learning. So in 1 Corinthians 14, from verse 26 to 33, 1 Corinthians 14, 26 to 33, how is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, each of you has a teaching or a song or a revelation, as an interpretation, let things be done for what? For edification. If anyone speaks in tongue, let it be two or at most three in each in turn, let one interpret. But if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak. Let the others judge. David is a prophet. Nathan is a prophet. Are you following me? David had a thought to build the house of God. Nathan was a person that God told, David cannot build my house. And he didn't make David less prophetic. But if anything is revealed to another who sees back, let the first keep silent. Look at what, what he said. 
But you can all prophesy one by one. Everybody has his turn to bring his own contribution. And when one is prophesying, what is the law? Let the others be quiet. You can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and what? All may be encouraged and the spirit of prophets. So it is an aberration. When people tell me the reason why they don't have self-control is because they are prophets. They don't read the Bible. In fact, the, the fourth thing the Bible identified that is subject is the spirit of prophets. You know the reason why that man is so disorganized is because he's a prophet. That's not the reason. It's because he is disorganized. The spirit of prophets are subject to the prophet. God is not the author of confusion. God cannot drop E from heaven. Did you see that funny guy in worry? Distributing keys to people, the key of the kingdom of God. He wants to make money. I saw the video where he said he was praying and key came. And people, even you will see the effect, and people still went to buy key. No, I don't believe. I want to believe that it's an exaggeration. We can't be that dull. But we have seen very strange things. We've seen people eat cow dung. We've seen people eat grass. We've seen people, eh? Some of you were pouring uh, salt in the days of Ebola. Then salt is the key. Salt is the key. And what did you use in the days of Corona? And we are going to hear more ridiculous things. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Tell your neighbor, God is not the author of confusion. Some people think the more erratic it is, the more spiritual it is. That's not true. Glory to God. David is a prophet, but amazingly he's a prophet who could listen to another prophet and yet could speak his own prophetic content in his time. Are you following me? Did you get the lesson? So he listened to Nathan telling him, you will not build. But yet God told him, somebody coming out of your loin will build. Glory to God. Now, Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1 to 10. We're going back into the tabernacle. There is a deep similarity between the tabernacle that was in the wilderness called Moses and the temple of Solomon that can make you to easily conclude that it happened that the temple was built by just observing the tabernacle. But David said to us that it is not just observation. All these plans and this vegetable and this description, the Lord made me understand by his hand or by his spirit upon me. Look for example, look at Hebrews 9. Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and it has an earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared, the first part, which in which was the lampstand, the table, the shoebread, which is called the sanctuary. That's the first part. The first part of, of, of the tabernacle was called the sanctuary. And those are the things behind it. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called what? The holiest of all, which had the golden censer, the Ark of the Covenant, Overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, the Aaron's rod that bordered, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were the cherubims of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now, when these things have been prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. So the part of the tabernacle that the priest accessed on a daily basis was called the first part of the sacramental. What is the name of that first part according to the spirit? It's the sanctuary. Thank you. Thank you for following. But into the second part, the high priest went alone once in a year, not without blood which he offered for himself and for the sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicating this 
that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. The, the, the tent or, or, or the curtain there was symbolic of the fact that the way into the holiest of all was still hidden. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who perform the service perfect in regard to the conscience. And verse 10, concerned only with food and drink, various portions, fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. What tabernacle was described in this Hebrews chapter 9? What tabernacle is this? The tabernacle in the wilderness. It was the tabernacle of the first covenant. Now, let's look at the temple. Second Chronicles chapter 5, from verse 5 to 14. They brought up the ark, the, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishes that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. And since Solomon and all the congregation of Israel were assembled with him before the ark, were sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted nor numbered for multitude. And the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to his place into the inner sanctuary of the temple, to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. That was what was called the, holy, the, the most holy place in the tabernacle. They brought it now. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles extended so that the ends of the poles from the ark could be seen from the only place in front of the inner sanctuary, but could not be seen from outside, and they are, they are there to this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two, tabern the two tablets which Moses put there at Oreb when the Lord made a covenant with children of Israel when they had come out of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priest came out of the most holy place. So even the temple, though more elaborate, was had a very close similarity with what? With the tabernacle. It had the first part that the priest went into, and it had the most holy place where the ark was. Are you following me? For all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions. So, you know, because of time, they built, they, they made a trumpet, and when they made a trumpet, the glory of God descended. You can easily conclude then that what David or what Solomon built as the temple was just a simple observation of what? Of the tabernacle in the wilderness that was just developed in a more elaborate way. And it might look very true, but that is being simplistic because David said there were some other things about it that only except the Spirit made you understand. He said, you know, I know the weight of gold. But, so if you, he said, many of us are too simplistic. We just look at everything. Uh, uh, pastor is preaching what this person said. But if you get to weigh that body, you will discover that it is more than just information. There are so many things we thought they are information and they are revelation. They might look so similar. Are you following me? So when you look at that, the, the temple and the, and the tabernacle in the wilderness, they are so similar. But David said, don't mistake it. All these plans of the temple, the Lord made me to understand by his spirit. So I have observed. There is nothing wrong with observation. There is nothing learning. There's nothing wrong with learning by books. But don't think everything about the kingdom is observable by five senses. Are you following me? There are things that are only in, that, that you can only discern by the spirit. You know, this, 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 this in Luke chapter 1, verse 57 to 80, when they gave birth to John the Baptist and they were to name him. The Bible told us when Elizabeth has given birth and they, you know, she gave birth at old age, the people came. And the people concluded to name the child by the name of his father, Zechariah. And it's valid. If it's because a son, it should be a, a projection of his father. 
But the one that said, his name shall be called John. Yes. And they said, there is no one among your relatives who is God by that name. Now, this is the problem. Every time you trap yourself only within that which can be learned by observation and learned by what people say, there could be other things of God that we never be able to access. Because his name shall be called John. Has no reference in the flesh. So they had to go to the man that was dumb, Zachariah. And Zachariah, they made signs. Zachariah said, his name is John. His name is John. And everybody marveled. And for he to be, to, to be impressed upon them, as he said his name is John, began to talk. Everybody said, hey, hey, we don't give back to something strange in our family today. You know? And everybody was marveled. Everybody was like, what type of child would this child be? It's amazing. That even in the church, see, some of us can stay so long around this corner that you would think you know how it works. What do they preach in Easter? If not resurrection. And uh, now, one of the quotes I, when I was putting an advert on this, is that a preacher should have the mind of a scholar, which means you have, must have the researching mind. But the problem most of us have that we think the preacher is just a basic scholar. So you will name him Zechariah after his father because you have observed, you've gone through the books. But there is somebody, there is somebody that that name John, you can't, if you trace all the genealogies of John, you will never see the name. It's never there. It does not matter that two of you are born from the same womb, it does not mean you, are, you have the same assignment. You can sleep on the same bed with so many people all the days of your life and you are not the same people. You can go to the same fellowship, go to the same church. There are some things that is only God that will inscribe it upon your heart and say, this is your part. There are things you can never discern in the company of the large. Oh, you are not getting this. Are you hearing me? Ah, everybody in faith, this is the way they talk. There is a part of your journey that will be shaped by the community around you. But it's a part of your journey that will be shaped by the impression of God upon your heart, what he wants you to be. And you must have it. And David said, all this that I am speaking, the Lord made me to understand. I just, the Lord just made me to understand. Glory to God. I, I wish I can put my heart into your heart. David, there were so many things David did that you can, you can only trace to the spirit. And there are things in your life that must leave just association. Too many of us speak Christianese by association. Oh, that's the way pastors speak. And there is nothing wrong with that. That's why I told you, you must have the mind of a scholar. You must research. You must imitate. You must observe. I listen to preachers very well. Quality one. I've listened to one today and it was so, and that's like the way people think. So I know people are kosher. I listen to DJs, but I know I'm not DJs. I can't break into 30 minutes and say, I feel, and for the next one hour I'll be shouting, it's not me. The Lord made me understand by spirit, that's not you. You know what I'm talking about. There are too many people who have dropped who they are for what they observe. And there's nothing wrong with what you observe. But the most important thing is, after that in expression, what is the impression the Lord has laid on you? And nobody can tell you that one except you have a very experiential walk with God who lives, who speaks, who teaches. He can teach you how to undo personalities in your life. Say, so this person, this is the way to undo the person. You won't see that one written when you are going in the morning. When you see uh, Tunde, just be greeting. No, the spirit will impress upon you. That person, the key is greeting every day. It's not, you can have the general definitions of be cautious, be kind, let brotherly kindness continue. But you can never easily have how to undo the best, how to undo your brother. 
No, how many of those type of people you can't run away from? You have to stay mouse. Every time you want to run, God says, it's your brother, stay there. You only learn those type of things by the impressions of God's spirit. You learn some by the general instructions of God's word. Are you hearing me? And you learn a lot by the impressions of God's spirit upon your heart. The Lord will make you understand. In 2 Samuel 23 verse 1 and 2, we began to look at David. Now, these are the word, last words of David. God says, David, the son of Jesse, the man raised up on high, the anointed of Jake, God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The spirit of the Lord spoke by me. And his word was on my tongue. My prayer for you is that God's word will be on your tongue. David said, my psalms is more than music. Why I am called the sweet psalmist of Israel is bigger than the dexterity of a man that can play the harp. The spirit of the Lord spoke by me. And his word, me. And that's why I showed you so many things David said in his psalms. It can't come from the flesh. They were too detailed. Are you following? See, today, even in perfect circles of the church, when or somewhere last week, we had an incident in church, and one pastor said, what I will tell you to do, you will not want to do it. I said, what? Well, there was the time now. I said, around two. I said, well, this is the time. That there is a particular psalm that we will read inside the water. He said, we, are going, we will go to your church. He said, I give them three days. He said, don't worry. I don't understand that operation. Even in perverted circles of the church, one of the most uh, embraced books is the psalms. Because the secret of them is not music. The secret is the spirit spoke by me. And his word was on my tongue. After you have put something here, may God bring something from here. Are you following me? After you have learned by books, let, I'm trusting that the Lord will bring inspiration. Inspiration many a times is what will even make you profit by your learnings. The learnings you have learned, if you don't come into the moment of divine inspiration, you won't even know how to use them. Are you following me, church? In 1 Chronicles 16, verse 7, they brought the ark. 1 Chronicles 16, verse 7. On that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hands of Asaph, his brethren, to thank the Lord. Go to verse 37 to 43 of that first Corinthians. When they brought the ark, as they dropped the ark, there was a psalm that that was the very first time David began to speak that psalm. And after that, he left Asaph and his brothers before the ark of the covenant to minister to the ark before the ark regularly as each day's work is required. This was a difference from the tabernacle of Moses. The tabernacle of Moses didn't have the priest continually ministering Songs. Now, how did David know? How did David shift? So you could see similarities, but I'm showing you the similarities, the things that were not the same. How did David move to the point where he began to put singers to continually praise the Lord so that we will understand that God dwells in the praises of his people because God does not dwell in tabernacle made with hands. You don't get it. God dwells in praises. God dwells in the atmosphere of worship. God dwells in hearts that are his temple where he is worshipped. That's what the Lord is seeking. How did David understand? The Lord made me to know this by his spirit. When you leave church and you have learned all the letters, what will make you know what to do part time is the spirit of God. This is what makes Christianity practical. Glory to God. If you look at the succession line of David, 
in 1 Chronicles 28, verse 1 to 6. David assembled at Jerusalem all the leaders of Israel, the officers of the tribe, the captains of the divisions who serve the king, the captains over thousands, the captains over hundreds, the stewards over the substance, possession of the king, his sons, with the officials, the valiant men, and all the mighty men of Valor. David arose to his feet and said, Here, me, my people, and my, my brethren and my people, I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of covenant of the Lord and for the full soul of our God, and I've made preparations to build it. But God said to me, You shall not build a house for my name because you have been a man of war and you have shed blood. However, the God of Israel chose me above all the house of my father to be king over Israel. He has chosen Judah to be ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father. And among the sons of my father, he has pleased, he was pleased with me to make me king over Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons, he has chosen my son Solomon. The general law, look at it. God spoke to David, and this, this, is, the, this is the deal. It's the tribe of Judah. That is going to be the ruling tribe. It's your father's house. That is going to be the royal family. And in the midst of that house. He chose David. Then when David was to hand over. David now has many sons. If you read the Bible. He has sons of Hebron. Sons of, sons of Jerusalem. He has so many sons. Now we have said to thee that his son must succeed him. But which one? So the general law had been given. That the throne cannot pass out of that family. But the specific had to happen. You see, one son of David, the Bible told us in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, they called him Adonijah. Adonijah said, I will be king. Why did he say I will be king? The Bible said, for his father had never rebuked him. Verse, 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. So his father had never rebuked him. 1 Kings, Adonijah exalted himself. His father had never rebuked him at any time. What have you done? If, if, so if David was actually to speak in the flesh, who is going to be a very strong supporter or, 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 or a keeper of his legacy? Is it not people that he has observed in time? He had enough opportunity to look, that means he looked at Solomon occasionally, Solomon did very, very funny things. And then he looked at Solomon is that the way? Is that where she should place the plate? He had no such opportunity with Adonijah. But by the spirit, you don't get it. The spirit can, is the only person that can make you see the possibilities in somebody that has present challenges. You didn't get what I'm saying. And the rebellion in somebody that seems to have it together now. You need the Holy Spirit. It's not the 10 years time you say, how did I? How did I marry you? Ibu Loti. No. There are donagers of this world. Their, their head is going to go down in blood. If you read the destiny of Adonijah, was king. Because rebellion was in his heart. But throughout the life of David, David had no chance to speak to him. You have done right or you have done wrong. Everything Adonijah did was always right. Except the spirit told David, that's nothing. I'm praying for you. The spirit will speak to you. That's not it. And, and some people are greeting you in the office every morning. Good morning. They in your titan, they are your enemies. You don't get what I'm saying. I say, ah, that person, everything I give to him, ah, oh God, ah, you can trust him. They want you to be rest assured until they swindle all your money. Of a cool rest. The real forward nights of this world don't give up their cover very far. The adonagers of this world don't give up their cover. You need the spirit. Say amen like thunder. Amen. All this you will know by the spirit on you. How do you want to know men? An impression of God. Are you, are you hearing me, church? This is the beauty of our faith. There are deals this land is going to appreciate. It's going to say that. In fact, buy it, buy it. Immediately, the Lord makes you understand by spirit that there is no land here for you. Some of you say, no, 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 no. I trust him. You remember those guys that trusted the builders of the ship more than the perceptions of Paul. Paul said, I perceive 
that this voyage is going to be the destruction of our property and our life. But the Bible says the people trusted the ship and the builders. And they said to say, and in fact, when they were sailing, the wind was blowing very softly. They said, this idiot, has he ever been at sea before? Is he not a prisoner going to Rome? But when the Eurocledon came, then Paul said, I told you, the Lord will know you know by the Spirit where to pass and where not to pass. The Lord said, no. We are express. But some of you are so, I know what I, you see not what I take every day? Yesterday is gone. Yesterday is not this morning. I'm not trying to say, but I'm trying to tell you. I'm not saying be spooky, but I'm trying to tell you the truth of the matter. Many times, listen, if, if it is someone, I have many sermons, but how do I know what to say? The Lord makes me know. I say, Pastor, how do you know? I know by his spirit, which is in you. There's a way you to, and I will show you, you will just know. You will know which word to speak. You will waste your words. I said you won't waste your word. You will know when. Some of us have tried to do good things at wrong times. Because only God can make you know time. God is the one who knows when the people's heart is open. That's the moment. That's the moment. We will have a practical walk with God. In Luke 2, verse 25 to 40, I'm almost true. There was a man called Simon, Luke 2, 25. There was in Jerusalem a man who, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. This man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he will not see death before he has seen the lost cry. He has that what? He has a general promise, specific. You will not see death before you see the lost Christ. The question is, how do we know when the lost Christ appears? You don't get it. And it came by the Spirit into the temple. When they brought Jesus for dedication, the Holy Spirit tapped it. The time of the promise has come. You will, the person that will link you to the prophecy that he has given to you is the Holy Spirit. We just said, come. Then he brought the general promise and brought it to time. The Bible says he came by the Spirit. You will come by the Spirit to the temple. When the parents brought the child to do, at, uh, to do for him according to the custom of the law, and he picked the child and said, Thank you, Lord. Lord, I can now depart. Simon, how do you know? Even if he waits in the temple every day, the child is coming. It might be the day the child will come. That he will just say, I want to take a stroll. There was just say, one child came. The only way not to miss God is to be in the spirit. The Lord made me to understand by his spirit. Not, was, not only him. The Bible spoke, spoke about a woman called Anna. She was a virgin from her youth. She, she married just for a few years. And before her husband died. And the Bible says she had been serving the Lord with prayers and fasting. And she too came into the temple. Your prayers and fasting will not be wasted. She was a prophet. Coming at that Instant, there are moments in the plan of God. There are moments. See, Paul will say, The Lord has opened a door. He has always sent us going to the world. But do you know, going to the world has doors. They have their moments. God will just say, This is it. Keen to it. We will not miss our moment. 
if we are not going to miss our moment, we must have an expression, walk with the Holy Spirit. The Lord made me to understand by his spirit upon me. Not just by the powers of observation, not just by looking at what people are doing, but because we have a living, living walk with God. Who is alive. Anna came in at that moment. And this is the way God has designed his church to walk. He called it different names. In John 16, verse 12 to 15, it's the beginning of the roundup. Why? Where does this thing speak to you? Jesus said, I see I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. The Holy Ghost guides. The Holy Ghost walks with you step by step. It will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. At the Habukai. You see, I tell you the truth and I lie not in the Holy Spirit. Very few things take me on our ways. I occasionally get taken on our ways, but they are very important. If they are very important, many a times I will have an inkling. For he will guide you to all, or to, he will tell you things to come. Yes? He will glorify. He will think of what is mine. He will declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, we will take of mine and declare it to you. In another place, he called that spirit the anointing. First John chapter 2, verse 24 to 27. Somebody said the anointing. Somebody said, I have the anointing. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And what does it do? And you do not need that anyone teach you. But the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And it's true. And it's not a lie. Just as he had taught you, you will abide in him. Continue. And now little children abide in him, but when he appears, we may have confidence. Now, so he called it the anointing. He said the anointing abides in you and the anointing teaches you all things. Someone say he teaches us all things. He called it the spirit of truth. Then he calls it what? The anointing. It's not saying you don't have teachers. That's why I started with David was a prophet who listened to another prophet. So the spirit of prophets are subject to one another. You can all prophesy and you can all learn. Prophesying does not exclude you from learning. Are you following me? But here, he's saying that you have an anointing. That anointing too, what? What does he do? Teach you. It was not Nathan who gave David the plans of the temple. Nathan told him who was going to build it. It's not you, it's your son. But the plant was implanted into his heart by the Spirit. Who can run your life into the very details, if not God? No pastor can give you the very counsel for every issue of your life. In his very detail. When you want to sleep with your wife, hold her hand by the head. You know, come. I don't cancel like that. Cancel you, general. Ma, sumo, da, da. That's all. I cannot. That's how some people turn church to pornography. Of a coin, bo, bo, kan. Atu, mu, fi, mu, ah. Yeah. Some of you, the church, the church, were born, the church, were born. Then when they start showing you, you got, you lost your mind. Because there are certain things. Who will tell you how to handle the secretary in your office? But he did funny batty. Who's cook? Funny man, what he said. Before you, you will just be on the Saturday. Say, something will tell you Monday might go no. Something is going to happen on Monday. Monday will be very tough. You just go. Oh my God. 
Before I married, one day I was driving. One man said, You should come and see me. Understand. This anointing. I was driving with joy. He said, Pastor, I was good. As I got to his gate, and I opened the door, I came out. I, I, the atmosphere around me just changed. My spirit just became tensed. I couldn't. So I said, ah, what? And I knew somebody had spoken to him. This is what they told him. This is what he's going to tell me. So as I entered the house, I was tensed. He was tensed. <laughs> this is somebody that when we see, we talk every five hours. How are you, sir? As he saw me, he said, let us pray. I said, hey. When somebody wants to start a discussion with let us pray, how do you go and visit your friend? And he said, let us pray. You know? <laughs> so at the time he was talking, he was trying to say, you know, the spirit, and it was about my wife. He said, that woman you want to marry? I said, that's her. He said, do you? I said, don't worry, let me tell you what the spirit told me. Came out at tea, before you start drama. By the time I told him what the spirit told him, everything, the Lord is with you, sir. Some of you, some of you, okay? Hmm. Share more, pay more, do boni. Hmm. Egg bad bro. Egypt, share if you bubble and not why. All the confidence you have built will just disappear by the window. The anointing teaches you all things. How do I know who is going to do me good tomorrow? I cannot tell you. I said the anointing. It's the anointing that looks that there is, there is peace there. You can't discern that by job. What is this thing? Say, man, any future bank lower. Say that that mass is his future is he's just being promoted. Nonsense. Anybody promoted can be demoted. There were people who when we were when we left school those days, there were so many banks. People left geography and planning science, Yoruba, they entered bank. We look like we didn't have destiny. They look like they had destiny. They, where are you now? I mean, intercontinental equity, all states, Omega, <laughs> Omega Bank. <laughs> it was all there. And you know, I was in Akure. It was so, some of them would they'll go, and go, go and buy Mazda 626 in 1999. Anybody? And then uh, Opel. The way they will pack the pair, you say, oh God, where's my tomorrow? <laughs> God will look at it. Back to my food. They will buy all of them, buy all of them. They will match some of them for to be one bank. All bankers around me are complaining. We have too much work now. They are not employing people. Where are the people they employ? The Lord made me understand by his spirit. When a bank wants to collapse, something will tell you, go and take your money there. The Holy Spirit will be poured upon us afresh. In, in, in Matthew 10, 16 to 20, it was, it's called the spirit of your father. He said, behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wood. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men that will deliver you up to councils to scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake, a testimony of de- to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you, do not worry about how or what you should speak. Somebody said, do not worry. What or how you should speak. For it will be given you in that hour. They are there are, there are speeches that are speeches of the hour. I think I was reading Martin Luther's story. That, that uh, is famous. I have a dream. He almost discarded that script. It was to pick up another speech. Because you think that was the only speech he gave. He was an orator. He gave speeches. The one he almost discarded is what we know him for today. Something told him, go back there. What will write your story? Only God knows it. <laughs> it will be given to you that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak. It is the spirit of your father 
who speaks. He said, Father, speak in me. These are powerful expressions of the kingdom. It's the spirit of your father that speaks in you. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 11 to 14. Speaking further of this experience. Say, oh, you afflicted one tossed with tempest, not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems. I will lay your foundations with sapphire. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught of the Lord. Somebody say, Father, I receive the teachings of the Lord in my life. This is the new, this is the promise of the new covenant. All your children shall be taught of the Lord. Give me that verse 13. And great shall be and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression. You shall not fear. And from terror it shall not come near you. Somebody say amen. amen. The fulfillment of that word you see it in John 6, 41 to 45. John 6, 41 to 45. The Jews... When they had complained about him because he said, I'm the bread of life, came down from heaven. And what did he say to them? Jesus, and they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he said, I, that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said, do not murmur among yourself. What's your problem? No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him at the last day. How does the father draw people? It is written in the prophet and they shall all be taught of the law. Because except God teach you, how can you know somebody whose father and mother you know? And the person comes and says, I'm from heaven. There must be somebody, something that has bypassed your, cap, your natural reasoning. Don't get it. Somebody you know when they gave back to you, he said, ah, he that has seen me has seen the father. If you were not taught of God, you can't comprehend that language. You don't get what I'm talking about. Are you following me? So actually what made up for that differential is what the Bible call being taught of God. Being taught of God is what the Bible call being drawn by the Father. So what, draw, what the Father used to draw us is his teaching, his impressions upon our spirit. Are you here? It is written, all your children are taught of them. Therefore everyone who has had and learned from the Father, what do they do? They come. Do you know why you got born again? It wasn't because you found logical the message. It's because you found conviction. You don't get it. Conviction is battered because you were taught of God. It was not your brain that was working. It was your spirit. Are you following me? It was that place, the spirit, what? The witness with our spirit where, that we are what? That's where the transformation happens. It's not here. It's inside. That's why it takes time for our mind to catch up with it. That's why we have renewal of mind, but we have what? Transformation of spirit. We have a, 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 a rebirth of spirit, but we have renewal of mind. All your children shall be taught of the Lord. It's not speaking about little children alone. Because that's the only time we quote it when we want to pray for our children. You are part of the children that must be taught. And Jesus, anybody that comes to me, their children taught. Coming to Jesus is because you are taught. You are a child that has been taught of the Lord. Are you with me? What is the new covenant? Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to 34. Are you blessed tonight? Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers. In that day when I took them out of, and by hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which I broke, though I was husband to them, says the Lord. What is the new covenant? This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it upon their hearts. And I will be their God and they will be my people. And what is the effect of that? Verse 34. No more shall every man teach his neighbor. 
And every man is brother saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me. This is the new covenant. The new covenant is not an inducement of man to pull you to God. The teacher of the New Testament is God himself. That's why if anybody does not have the Holy Ghost, is none of his. Which means you can't just have a mental agreement to what we are doing here. Are you following me? Because this is the testimony of the New Testament. Nobody will tell his brother, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. I'll forgive their iniquity and they will see no, their sin I will remember no more. They will not all have the same educational background, but they will all know me. They will not have the same qualification. They will not have the same background, but they will all know me. Because what God is, the teacher for every one of us, whether you are literate or you are not literate, educated or uneducated, is the spirit of God. You might not know how to say too many things, but you will know the Lord. Nobody will tell you something is wrong. In your spirit, you will know that's wrong. Nobody is there to tell you. You are alone. Nobody sees you, but you can't do what is wrong. Because this is a new testament. I'll put my law in their mind. I'll put my words in their heart. They will all know me. Nobody will need to tell them, come know the Lord. For they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. That is still the fulfillment of all your children shall be taught of the Lord. He called it the anointing. He called it the spirit of truth. He called it, um, what did they call it again? He called it uh, the, sp the spirit of your father. He's still speaking about the same thing. In fact, in Luke 10, 17 to 24, they were rejoicing that demons were subject to them. And they told them, do not rejoice that demons are subject to you, but rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. And he told them, continue. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. Said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven. You have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent. You have revealed it to babes. It's not their natural capacity that made them to understand it. It was hidden from some people. It was what? Revealed to some other people. You have revealed it to me. Even so, Father, for it seems so good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows the, who the Son is except the Father. And who the Father is except the Son. And the one to whom the Son will reveal him. And look at what he said. And he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are your eyes. We see the things which you see. Do you know why? I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see. These things that you see and they have not seen and to hear what you hear and they have not had it. So it is not by just searching. It was not that we have the capacity to search more than another. It is the Holy Spirit himself who decides and says, this is the moment. This is the time. Are you following me? To reveal the face of God. We are living in the dispensation where the Holy Spirit is making the Son of God known. We didn't search him out by our five senses. Many prophets, many kings deserve to see these things. It was not given. But the problem is that it is given to many people now who are not interested. It's already what is given, but it's not necessarily what is taken. Are you following me? The same way some people searched for it, but it was not given. Some, the same way some people, it is given to them, but they are not searching for it. Uh, are you getting me? Did you get that? Some people searched, but it was not given. So some people it was given, but they are not searching. And both of them live in darkness. But thanks be to God that it is given. It is revealed to you. Somebody say it's revealed to me. Somebody say it's revealed to me. Glory to God. So we're going to pray two prayers. After David. We cannot deny that David saw things of the temple by observation and learning from the first tabernacle. There are things you will pick in this kingdom by trainings, by teaching, by observation. Are you following me? By being pastored, by being taught, by being uh, discipled. 
But David now said, I got to a junction in that journey. When I started looking for the weights of the lampstand, when I started looking for the number of bowls, all that the Lord made me understand by his spirit. No other way. The reason why most of us are troubled after we've listened to so many sermons is because that personal place where the Lord needs to impress upon your heart from the midst of that general thing that he has taught you is empty, it's not there. He needs to be able to pick something from the midst of all you, you had tonight to impress it and say, that is you. The day that happens, you don't forget so Samuel. Because God had drawn something from it and impressed upon your heart. Stand to your feet. Let's pray to prayers. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. And we read Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. The Lord made me understand by spirit. Told you the story before. If I went to preach somewhere, I was in university those days. I was sick. I had malaria those days. And I, I, didn't, I, I almost didn't go for that meeting. It was not a meeting I prepared so much for. But in the evening I went and every, every strength was needed. Then we began to minister to some people and a particular lady started taking our time. And the more we were saying, come out, stay there. I knew I did. I couldn't afford the strength to minister. Because she was creating a lot of sin and then the demon did not leave. So you know what we do? We told them to take her to the basement and be ministering to her. And I ministered to people and I finished and I'd forgotten. With closed service. Then I went to the basement and I saw that they were still ministering to her. Ah. Stay there. Come out. How many of you? 17 of you. How many of you have witnessed those type of things? <laughs> I told God, I'm going back to campus. The meeting was in town. I said, I don't even have time. I don't even have the strength. I said, Lord, what is wrong with this lady? Except you tell me. I, I, because I know it's not that we have not shouted. Then in a quick vision, I saw a place where they sell cars. And the Lord said, ask her, what were you doing? where they sell cars. It does not make me... How do you want to cast out a demon? So I told people, leave her, leave her, leave her. What were you doing? Where they sell cars. And her face changed. Ah, I cannot say. <laughs> so I said, this is what we've been dealing with. I said, ah, if I say, the, third, the day I say it is the day I will die. Hey, I said, this is the demon. It was a day we clouded our mind. And he gave us a whole, and she said that she, we, they pressed on. For you to know, it's a very serious thing. They pressed on after that night. She didn't say it. The fear was was tangible on her. So I told her, I said, "Don't stop here. Bring her to my campus." The next, the next when they spoke to her, they cancelled that. Then they came. Said, "Let me tell you, I'm God's servant. You cannot die here. If you die, we raise you. You know those days." I said, what were you doing? That is right. To cut the long story short, she was initiated into a cult in a particular place where they were selling cars. That was, so, and they told her the day you say this thing to anybody, you will die. So the fear was the torment that we are dealing with. How do you do that? Except the Lord makes you know. I speak. And tell you so many. I went to preach in one town in River State. I've told you before. And before I was going, the Lord made me know by His Spirit. I saw a vision and I saw a young man in a casket. And the young man was in you know, the casket, was what do you call that casket? Called a lilac, that purple, royal 
two of them were in need. And they were crying, tears were in their eyes, but instead of it to be water, it was blood. And I came out of that vision, I said, God, what is this? He said, where you are going, the young men of the place don't mind to die young as long as they die rich. And the Lord gave me a word. He said, preach, is the young man, Absalom, safe? I can't forget. The first day, I got to the meeting, I preached my own sermon. You know, the, the way you, you a word. Then the next afternoon, I started preaching. Is this young man, Absalom? See, I could literally see that word go through that congregation. It was in the town hall. It was in our other, what do they call that place? Is it our other something, something? In the midst of the summer, everybody started speaking in their language. I was the only one lost. I didn't know whether I was offended. I didn't know. As I finished the summer, the youth leader just came. Man of God, follow me. He said, what you are saying is the truth. Last month, they killed, the militants came to this community and killed our youth leader. I said, this is where they shot him. Pray. He ran when they shot him. This is where he fell. Pray. He took me to the... That was the only time in my life I've seen the whole community following me. Broad daylight. The whole street, everybody. All the young people. That was when I discovered that that meeting I was having was the first Christian meeting they've had in that community in 10 years. My friend called me and said, Man, Stan, you are going to such a place. I said, I don't know, but the Lord made me know. By evening, all the elders of the community came. The old people, you have touched something. You can't touch this demon by your brain. You might think that what is this thing I'm saying? It might look like foolishness to you, but if that is what he says, I have learned by experience. Oh, many years ago, I was preaching in a place. It was I'm very worded people. And I, the Lord showed me a dream somebody was having. I said, Lord, not in this place. Not in this place. Nobody. You can't be having that type of dream. So I shut it down. I continue preaching. But when you shut it down, you lose your peace. At the end of the service, as I got out, a particular lady already Coca. I will never forget. She walked up to me. He said, Tayo, I want to tell you something. I said, no. And she began to relate the dream. This is the dream I'm having. It was exactly what God showed me. She was not the type of person I will ever think we have in that type of torment. And she told me, she said, please join. Ah, I felt so ashamed. But I made up my mind that day. Anything he shows me is intelligent it's not intelligent the Lord made me know by his spirit tell your neighbor what is the Lord making you know Ephesians 1 verse 15 therefore I also have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus I want you to pray like you have never prayed before tonight because if you don't have this experience everything I'm teaching will waste it's the spirit of God that will take you see what Jesus said? He will take from me. He will remind you. He will show you. And when he takes and, and reminds and shows, your experience, your journey is old. Just old. Therefore, after I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your love for all the saints, what did I do? I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What will that do? That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. See, because there are things, words of man can't communicate. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Continue. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? Towards us who believe according to the might, to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. This is really how to understand Easter. If you don't, if you go to Jerusalem and go and see an empty tomb, you can't know the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection is communicated by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So a lot of dead people go to visit the tomb and come back dead. But when the spirit of revelation enters to you, the when he was raised, you will discover you are not learning history. You were raised. 
you understand that it is not an event of history, it's an event of your life. That is communicated by what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation. Colossians 1, 9 to 11. If you get on read, you can read that Ephesians 2, 23. It will do you well. But for this reason, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk. You know why most people don't have a walk? They don't have a feeling. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. It's not about do's and don'ts. You want to walk pleasing to the Lord. It happens by spiritual understanding. Are you following me? That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Go to verse 9 again and let's pray that prayer in verse 9. We never cease to pray that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Tonight, raise your voice and pray for yourself to be filled with the knowledge of the will of God in Christ in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's what I want you to pray. That the Lord will make you know and make you understand by His Spirit. By His Spirit. By His Spirit. By His Spirit. How do you know the right words? How do you know what to say? How do you know where to go? The Lord will fill me and you with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Filled with all, with the knowledge of his will. Pray that prayer for yourself. Open your eyes and count, read that scripture and pray it for yourself. Pray, pray to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Discerning the things of the spirit by the spirit. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. David said that the Lord made me understand all this by his hand, let your hand be heavy upon us. Let your hand be heavy upon us. As a church, evade us with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Fill us with the knowledge of your will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Let's know how to bring your government to this territory by spiritual understanding. Magado Sabalagadaya. Ruskarabaya. Let's know how to govern our homes, influence our friends in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Somebody pray for yourself. Lord, let's, let's know how to, how to tap into the resources of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You are a son of God. You should not live on crumbs. You need to have all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You need to have the word so full in your heart in all wisdom and spiritual understanding somebody pray for yourself tonight Rabba Laba Shandaba Oh Rabba Yaba Yakatodia so that we will know how to walk what to do, what to say where to go, who to be friends with who to stay away from oh God, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Malabotabayada. Rubaya tedi sarabako padia. Rababakuria tedi bo sekere bababa. O rube kekuria ba shekera mokotanda. Eriba katando roboko bigadia. Rubi kiraba kokuba kadia. A sharamande keluso prodia tamo. Rusa tedi kandi bulutama. The anointing is in you. It teaches you all things. It teaches you all things. Rika bolia tambula tane. Raka saboro devia. Lord, stand up in us. Stand up in us. Stand up in us. You are the living God. Stand up in us. 
The way out of every tight corner we are today by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The way out of every demand that is laid upon us by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The way to walk in love in a world full of hate by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The way to be kind in a world full of hatred by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The way to live in peace uh, in a world in anxiety uh, by the spirit of wisdom and revelation fill us on fill us fill us with it leave no space wherever the flesh has invaded our journey dis dislodge it by your spirit dislodge it by your spirit wherever the flesh has invaded our journey dislodge it by your spirit we cannot start in the spirit and, and be perfect in the flesh wherever the flesh has invaded our spiritual work dislodge it tonight wherever wherever we are lost has overtaken our spiritual hunger dislodge it by your spirit but fill us with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding <laughs> So how can I walk when I don't know the way of the wind? How can I run in this race when I don't know the spirit? How can I fly with the eagles when I don't know the wind? His power's working me, it's changing everything. I swallow my pride. I have come to the school of your spirit. And now I know in your hands are the keys of eternal life. A little here and a little there. Until the day will come, you have spoken me.
For the Spirit of God, breathe upon every one of us afresh. Fill us, fill us, dislodge the power of the flesh. Let the circumcision happen not by hands but by the Spirit. Take away the veil by the Spirit of God. Let noise begin. Let impressions be clear. Let leadings be clear. Let leadings be clear. Let courage rise in your people to follow your word in the name of Jesus. Let confidence rise. The one that is not built on the flesh, but are built on the promises of God. Let it rise tonight. We give you praise for you are implanting it. You are changing our soul. You are implanting this confidence in every heart and in every soul. And we are grateful for that which you have started and which you will continue even to the end of time in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What you need to do tonight, you will not wait till tomorrow. That day David ran from Saul and went to his house. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, said, if you stay till tomorrow, you will die. You have to leave tonight. I bring you the spirit of importunity. I break the power of delay. I break the power of being of being like a desica. I bring you time, the power to be instant in season and out of season. You will come in at the right time. He said, tonight, David, is the night. Not tomorrow, tonight. He said, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. And he made David to get out of his house. Whatsoever you need to do now, the power of performance is released. There shall be no longer any delay. Wherever you have been delaying God to perform by your inactions, we break the shackles of your inactions. We break the shackles of your inactions. The Lord will have a free cause and the Lord will bring his deliverance. The Lord's deliverance is your portion. You are seeing deliverance. You will not stay in the same spot. You will not be assaulted by the same assault. The Lord brings deliverance for you. It is well with you. Lift your hands and give him praise tonight. Give him all the honor. Give him all the adoration. Hallelujah. If you are blessed tonight, say the Lord has made me understand by his spirit. Let's give our offering tonight. Hallelujah. I am the apple of his eyes. I am the tree. Guiding me safely in the way. Guiding me safely. Guiding me safely in the way. Guiding me safely in the way. I am the apple. I am the apple of his heart. I am the dream. I am the dream. He gets around. My life is engraved upon the power. Be 
Many of you are blessed tonight. I pray for you. You will come back and say, The Lord spoke to me, the Lord led me, the Lord impressed this upon me, and this happened by the reason of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, tomorrow is prayer meeting 6 to 7 p.m. Press say, These are not these are things you need to keep pressing, and they are true. I remember many years ago when we used to pray that Ephesians chapter 1 that the Lord will give us. The spirit of wisdom. We prayed it, prayed it. Can I take it? Told us that's what he prayed and broke into revelation and ministry. So we took it and we prayed it. And I tell you, something shifted. Something shifted. Something will shift. As you pray, as you respond to the world, something will shift. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. The Lord bless the offerings of your hands. The Lord bless the works of your hands. The Lord bless the intentions of your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we see tomorrow as we pray. Make it a time with God. Let's share the grace and fellowship tonight. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and have a great night.